All right, welcome back to the garage. Today, I'm gonna be uh, cleaning up my rear end real good, uh, taking the old brakes off of it, measuring it for a set of Willwoods that are gonna go on it. Um, to clean it up, it's pretty pretty dirty. It's got a lot of, a lot of grease and schmoo on it. Um, I've got uh, some pressure washer pieces here that uh, I'm gonna try and uh, put together to, to make up a pressure washer to uh, clean this up with so let's get to let's get to working now if you know me you know that I collect junk anything that somebody wants to throw away I'll gladly take on um, this pressure washer here looks like it froze and cracked the housing on it there so I think that one's probably garbage this one here I don't know what's wrong with it I don't think anything's wrong with it uh, other than it was missing uh, a hose so I've got a hose off this guy, which might fit that guy and function properly. So let's uh, see if that works. All right, that other hose did not fit that guy. So I resorted to fixing what's broken. And uh, if you notice the, the housing on that guy looked like it had frozen and broken. Uh, so I, I tried to find JB Weld or something, but I didn't happen to have any of that. But what I do have is little pieces of steel. So I cut a little plate. You can see that that's just the size that has the same bolt holes bolt it down on top of it it still leaks a little bit but not like it did um, it runs but it's not happy about it I'll see if I can show you real quick turn on the water see she trickles out of there just a wee bit crank her on stand back But I got the pressure washer. Shut up. Yep, yeah, so let's see if that'll work. Okay, I've hosed it down with some spray nine here. Heavy duty degreaser, cleaner. Let that soak in for a little bit. I'll fire up the pressure washer and get her cleaned up. Let's get that going. Okay, I got her cleaned up. It's looking real good. Um, looks like the guy I bought this off of rebuilt these brakes not that long ago. And I don't really want to throw this in the garbage because I could use them on the Firebird if I ever need to. So I just wonder if I pull the axle out, if I can just unbolt this uh, whole brake assembly and just pull it off as a single piece. I'm gonna start by taking the uh, differential cover off there, draining the fluid out of it, taking a look at that, and then uh, going from there. So let's do that. I guess first things first, I'll pull this uh, brake line here. Uh, I've loosened it from the from the back side of the drums, back side of the master cylinders there. Um, and now I've got to detach it from here. It's just a simple clip on this side. There's a C-clip over here on this other side. Pull that guy off there. And uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay, with those clips out of the way, I was able to unthread the flex line, I thought it would un unthread from the fitting, but instead it un it came out of the uh, T-joint here. But uh, as you can see, got that off there. Uh, now I should be able to unbend these clips. There's one there and one over here and uh, get that line off there. Okay, the line's off there. It still had brake fluid in it, so I'll take that as a good sign, but I put the uh, flex line and the two clips back on it. Uh, before I take this cover off, I just wanted to denote the orientation of it. There's a little uh, little detail in it here at the top that is not present on the bottom. So that's how I know which ends should be the top next time I put it back on, as well as this uh, brake holder, brake line holder goes on this side. Uh, I should be able to pull these bolts off, dump this out, and see what happens. Okay, just starting to drain the oil out of here. It's looking pretty good. I'm really happy about that. No major chunks yet. Time will tell. Let's pull this cover off. Okay, I uh, drained the oil out of it. Pulled the cover off of it. It's looking real good. Uh, Posi unit, awesome. 410 gears, awesome. Uh, I've got to pull this little bolt here so I can slide the, the keeper pin out and uh, pull, the, pull the axle shafts. There are C-clips right in there on the axles, pull those, and then the axles should just slide right out. Let's uh, do that. Okay, I got that uh, keeper pin out of there, and you can see a little wear where the uh, 
axles rubbed up against it, but other than that, it's in really great shape. I pulled one of the C-clips on the uh, driver's side, pulled that out. It's looking, looking all right. Let's uh, rotate this thing around and see if we can't get the other C-clip out of it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see in there, but I just pushed this axle in a little bit and uh, you can see the, um, the splines there and that's the C-clip there. Got me a little magnet little magneto guy, slide him in there and pull out the C-clip. There we go, and swipe that off and see how things look. Okay, moment of truth, slide the axle out. See what oh, yeah. Not bad, not bad. Let's go pull the other one. Set you up over here so you're kind of out of the way, but you can still see what's happening. Slide this little guy. Okay. Yeah. Axles are a little bit, a little pity, but uh, not bad. I think they're alright. The splines look okay. Yeah, I think they'll work just fine. Now that the axles are out of the way, I should be able to just pull these four bolts and have this whole brake assembly just come off as a single piece. Let's give that a try. Holy cow, these bolts are on here tight. I've got to use the old uh, double wrench of death and a pry bar to try and break them loose as well as screw them off. Uh, here's one that I got out. You can see the uh, threads on it are pretty, pretty flattened out. It's not real happy. So I'm glad I'm doing this. Glad I'm getting these out of here, getting them out of the way. Let's do it. All right, I am victorious. I got that little guy off there. See here where it's starting to get a little flaky rust right here on this flange. Clean that up a little bit before I put it all back together. And the nuts, one of the washers is twisted in two. Here's the brake uh, assembly. It all came off all right. One bolt's rusted right into it and uh, didn't want to come out. That guy right there was a real pain in the ass, but uh, yeah, she's off there. Now let's uh, do that on the other side. Okay, a little quality time with a wire wheel or two and uh, knocked all the rust off this guy. Let's see how she's looking. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Should be able to pull some decent measurements off that. Let's, uh, let's go pull the other side off. Okay, I got this side off. I also wire wheeled it, cleaned it up. It was not as much of a pain in the ass, but still quite a pain in the ass. Uh, pro tip for you, this is a Rust-Oleum paint can lid. Fits really nicely over the end of the um, axle shaft there, or uh, axle housing, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, uh, fits really nicely, allows you to clean that up without getting a bunch of crud in your bearing. So, that's, uh, that's where I'm at with that. Okay, I've got my measurement instructions from Willwood here as far as what all I need to measure on this uh, rear axle to get accurate measurements for the proper brakes. Uh, I've clamped a straight edge to the mounting surface here. Um, did that on both sides actually. And I've got to measure from, from this mounting surface to the wheel mounting surface uh, is one of the measurements as well as end play. So you push the axle all the way in, take a measurement, pull it all the way out, take a measurement, and uh, that, that determines your uh, end play. Now, I've measured both sides here, and I, they're different. The driver's side is 2.6675, and the passenger side is 2.8480. It's a difference of 0 0.1805, almost 3 sixteenths of an inch difference in, in the baseline measurement from the mounting surface uh, of the brakes to the mounting surface of the wheel. Uh, I think that somebody may have replaced that axle over there with uh, something from a later model, which has a bit longer axle on it. Uh, I've got to do a bit more research and find out. But for the time being, I'm going to pull the axles out of here and compare them side by side and see if that one is indeed longer. Okay, I've got the axle shafts over here on the bench. I clamped a piece of angle iron on the 
uh, wheel mounting surface of this one, butt this one up against it nice and tight. And then I come to this end, and I don't know if you can tell, but this one's just a just a hair longer. It's actually 32 thousandths longer. Uh, this is the driver's side axle is longer than the passenger side by just a just a hair, right? Like not really enough to make a whole lot of difference. I'm gonna swap sides with them and see how that affects my uh, measurements. Uh, let's do that. Okay, I've slid the axles back in and remeasured it, and uh, sure enough, my my difference between the driver's side and the passenger side has shot up to almost a quarter of an inch. It used to be three sixteenths of an inch, and that kind of makes sense, right? Because if you're taking uh, and adding thirty thousandths to this side and subtracting thirty thousandths from that side, it's going to make it you know sixty thousandths more, which is uh, I think our difference here is a bit more than that, but we're pretty close. Uh, and I, the only thing that I can think of is that maybe the, the carrier is that way just a little bit. And that's, that's making that axle seem longer on that side. So good news is my axles are the same size. That should be just fine. Um, I've got to figure out what to do from here. Uh, quick, little pro tip as I was rotating this thing around with the pin out of the middle of it, uh, this washer fell out and it was, you know, about that big and it's got a good sized hole in it. And I started looking at this thing and I started noticing that the spider gear is down in here. And I don't know if you can see, Let's try and get the light in here, but, uh, between the, the spider gear and the carrier down here on the bottom, there's a spacer and that spacer was missing from the top. And, uh, it's because it had slid out, it slid out in the backside. And so I've got it wired in here for now. Uh, until I put this thing completely back together, but I had to slide it in from the back side here and and work it down in there until it got right down around the, uh, the spider gear there. So anyway, just a little pro tip: if you find a strange washer as you're going through rear end, it may be from there. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna scratch my head a little bit and think about this and figure out what I want to do next. Okay. Okay, I called and talked to Willwood and uh, told them what I was seeing here for axle offsets. And they said the the minimum has to be 2.71 in order for any of their brake kits to work. So uh, with that said, I'm not going to bother with the disc brakes on the rear of this car right now. I'm going to uh, fix up the, the drums there, just clean those up a little bit, make them nice and pretty, get new cables for them as well, and uh, move along with my life. So let's get to doing that. Now, I did some more research online about this, and it sounds like there's different size carriers depending on what gear ratio you're using. Uh, and the reason for that is because whenever you go to a lower gear ratio, like 410 here, the pinion gear gets smaller and smaller because it's got less teeth on it. Um, and what happens is, is you've your ring gear has to move closer to the center line of the axle in order to match up to that uh, pinion gear. And uh, so they, they have a, a wider uh, carrier that moves that gear that way. Uh, and I believe what happened here is somebody put 410 gears on the smaller carrier and uh, they added a spacer. There's a spacer available. So they added the spacer and of course that, that uh, moves the gear over a little bit, but maybe not quite far enough in order for it to be centered. But uh, I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm just going to leave this as it is, clean it up, clean up the axle, rebuild the brakes, put it all back together, and be done with it. Okay, I've got the uh, rear brakes here on the on the bench. I've knocked the uh, the bolts out of them that were rusted in there. Um, I want to pay close attention to the orientation of the springs and all the control bars, or sorry, connecting rods that go in here and everything like that so that I can put these back together exactly the way that they are. So that's, this is the um, passenger side and over here is the driver's side. And uh, let's get to tearing these apart. Okay, I've got that driver's side brake uh, all tore apart here. All the pieces are in this box. Uh, over here I've got some Eastwood rust encapsulator and some chassis black paint, some converter that I'm gonna spray them with. But first I'm gonna throw that thing in the uh, blast cabinet here and blast it up and try and get all the rust and crud off of it. Let's do that. Okay, I got the uh, backing plates all sandblasted. They're uh, good to go. They're not uh, perfect, but they're good enough for me. And that rust encapsulator paint should cover the rust and keep it from coming back. Uh, over here on the rear end, I've been doing some cleaning up on it, trying to get it prepped for, for paint as well. Um, I'm having a, having a hard time getting in the nooks and crannies. What do you guys use to get up in there? Clean that off. 
yeah, probably just a few more hours cleaning and uh, I might be ready for paint. Um, one thing that uh, I noticed on my rear end was they, they weld the axle tubes to the center housing in various spots here, there, there, and there. And on this side, both of these welds were not very good from the factory. Um, there was a bulb sticking out on, on both of them. And as well, whenever you turned it over, oil would leak out of them. So I welded those up and ground those down there, there. This one here, it's got a little divot in the center of it. I may grind that out and re-weld it, but it's just fine. Uh, the top one was real good. Back here, there's one on the back side. There and there, and I welded both those up. Made them look pretty, look, ground them down. They're in good shape. The rear end's looking pretty good. Getting all the rust knocked off this thing. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, luckily, I've got this uh, wire wire brush, it's stainless steel from Walter. It's uh, working really good, getting in the cracks and crevices really nicely. I was sitting here thinking, and I was like, you know, this thing has to be welded on. So why would I paint it and then weld it? So let's weld it and paint it. All right. Uh, after I get this cleaned up, it's going to be fit into there. So let's do that. I've uh, ordered some some new studs, but they're not here yet. I'll uh, use these studs for the time being. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing cleaned up. Okay, I think I knocked all the rust off this thing. It's looking real good. Now I gotta wanna slide it underneath the car, which I've moved back over. And uh, the way that I'm gonna do that, I've got my cribbage, cribbing set up on uh, roller skates here, the uh, dollies that you get uh, on there. And then I've got a board here. And see, I don't wanna remove the center section of my rotisserie here. So what I'm gonna do is just rotate this around and have that board slide on top of that set of cribbing right there. And then I can just slide the whole thing over that uh, cross support. Okay, rear end is underneath there. Now I wanna find the center of the wheel wells. And if you take a look down the side of the car, that string hangs out there and makes it very difficult to measure and get accurate where the center of this is going to be. So I put a piece of angle iron here, blocked it up, got it set in there, right on there, so I can tell exactly where center is on both sides and make sure that it's lined up and straight and square. And uh, then I can take some more measurements. I've got the string held up here by a magnet. Once I get it exactly where I want it, I will tape it into place. Okay, the wheel well centers are marked or plumb bobbed, I guess you'd say. I've got the rest of the Ride Tech kit here. I've uh, bolted the lower link bars onto the uh, spring pockets um, for both sides here. Uh, next, I've got to um, Put this guy on yeah so this is the lower mounts on the uh, spring perch of the axle and holds the other end of these link bars um, i've thrown one of them on here just underneath here i'm using these uh um, lug nuts uh, they're working pretty good because it's 7 16 20. anyway uh that's that's that one that i've got on i'll go do the other one and then we can start kind of positioning this thing and uh, put those lower link bars on. Okay, I'm getting these lower link bars put on here. Um, one thing that I noticed is like I've got these double adjustable uh, rod ends and I put the adjustment up in here. I should actually put that back here so it makes it easier to adjust if you need to adjust that. Uh, Ride Tech is nice enough to give you new hardware. They, they give you these nice long bolts and uh, the, the J nuts or the clip nuts that, uh, that you need, however, if you'll notice, there's a difference between here's the original, there's the new stuff, and with these clip nuts, the original has this extended part right here, which is kind of a pain in the ass because it'll rust and it'll break and then you gotta cut a hole to get the, get the bolt out, um, whereas these are nice and solid. However, they don't have that little kick up like these do. And if you look up in here, <laughs> actually I'd, I've got to take this apart but uh, there's a lip that that's got to fit over I guess if I wanted to I could grind that lip away and be able to use these but I think for now I'll just use these guys uh, to get this mocked up um, I want to show you guys something really cool 
over here on the other side. I was uh, on Facebook Marketplace yesterday and uh, ran across these. These are some Billet Specialty 17-inch wheels, which look and fit a lot better than these crappy uh, Jaguar wheels did. Old and busted, a new hotness. So I'm going to be using these guys. And as you can see, they're, I think they're 17 by 10 with five and a half inch back spacing. These are uh, 255, 255, 50, 17. And uh, I think they look pretty killer on here, just, you know, for mock-up or whatever, but I think they're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna run with these guys. I'll keep working on this. I'll bring you back whenever I do something cool. Okay, I've pulled that Laurel link bar out of here and I just wanted to show you the difference between those clips. Here's the, the notchback factory style clip. Uh, which comes around this uh, lip here and that allows it to sit flush both these guys this one here is one of the other clips and you'll see it kind of spreads out and it doesn't sit in there flush and it's hard to thread a bolt into so I'm gonna swap this guy here out for one of these guys and move on with my day okay I got that lower link bar uh, situated in there the way that I like it I uh, Got it centered from side to side um, using these this outer lip here, making sure that it's centered there. It's also centered front to back. I think I've got my pinion angle set about right. Now then, what I can do is weld some angle iron in here. I've got it set nice and level. Take a piece of angle iron here, weld it to the uh, to the axle, weld it to the frame there, so that this stuff doesn't move and then I can work on it without getting it out of whack. Let's do that. Okay, I got it welded into place here. It shouldn't move. I should be able to work on it. It's nice and solid. Doesn't move at all. I can move on to these, uh, uh, these upper link bar brackets, which need to be welded to the axle tube. Unfortunately, if you see right there, it's running into that brake line holder. So I've got to cut that little guy off there, which is kind of going to suck because there's not a lot of room back up in here. Anyway, it's uh, we'll get that cut off there and then we'll see if we can't line those up and make them look pretty. Okay, I took off that uh, brake line holder and uh, got these set up in there so the way that I like them. Um, I did a little bit of grinding on, on this area here of the brackets to make sure that they fit nice and snug to the tube. Uh, I think I'm ready to tack it in now. Just throw a few tacks on it and uh, then I can work on the other side. Okay, here's that driver's side. I've got it all tacked in. Now I can uh, unbolt that guy, cut cut off these uh, support pieces, and pull this thing back out of there and weld those up solid. Let's do that. Okay, I cut the uh, supports off here, cleaned this up so you can't even tell that it was welded to, and now I'm going to weld these guys up. Got those tacked on there nicely, so weld those up as well. I cleaned off the area that was welded right there. If you can see so let's bust out the welder and weld those tabs on there and get to rock and rolling okay I got these uh, upper link bar tabs welded on there on the outside and the inside all the way around they're looking real good real happy with them uh, I think they're lined up real nice welded along the back as well that's looking really good I'm getting this thing prepped for paint um, I've, I've removed the studs that were in here and uh, got some new studs. Here's the old ones, these guys here, and here are the new ones. Now the new ones aren't knurled like the old ones were, but I think they'll work just fine. They're, they're both 7 16 and I think they'll be great. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I'll pick it up next time and, and paint this and do all kinds of other fun stuff. But uh, for now, that's where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. But uh, here's what I'm doing. Cheers.